Uh, okay, sorry. So power. So textbook definition of power is the rate at which work is done, the rate at which energy is transferred from one object or one form to another. Um, so to calculate average power, you just take the work or the change in energy and divide it by the time it took. Okay. Um, often, though, the energy isn't being transferred at a constant rate. Okay. And in that instance, it becomes a derivative. Okay. So the power is the derivative of, of work or energy transfer with respect to time. Okay. Um, so often what that boils down to, another sort of easy way that you can calculate this instantaneous power. So power is the derivative of work with respect to time. Okay. So that's the derivative of, all I did here was I substituted, work is f delta x times cosine theta, right? Follow? Um, go, brain, process. Um, I'm trying to remember how I get how I, was, I had a way that I was going to explain this little uh, calculus step here to you guys, and I'm trying to remember now what my process was. Right. Um, oh, right. Thank you. Thank you. That's embarrassing that I didn't. Yeah. Delta x is the x. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So then you get f cosine theta dx over t. Notice dx dt is just velocity, right? Cool. So you got f times cosine theta times velocity. Is it because is it because like we usually like theta usually isn't a variable, we usually know that, so it's just like a constant, so that's why we don't factor it into the derivative? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, and you're right. If the angle here that's a oh, hundred percent true, if the angle here was changing, then this would get up. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So. Yeah, you don't need to do Alright. Okay, everybody cool with this? Alright, so um, cool. So let's do a couple examples here. All right. Uh, so this first example is easy uh, mathematically, but I want to make sure you guys understand what we're finding here. All right. So it says Roy lifts a 20 kilogram box up three meters in four seconds. How much power was used? So the idea is the box starts out on the ground, and then we're going to lift it up three meters. All right. So power is work divided by time. To be clear, really. There's only enough information here to calculate the average power, right? It's sort of like if I say, I drove 300 miles to Chicago in five hours. How fast did I go? All you can find is an average speed, right? So same idea here. Just based on what you're given, the only thing you could find is the average power, OK? If I wanted to find instantaneous power, I'd have to specify a moment, right? I'd have to say, how much power was being generated is the way that's often phrased. How much power is being used at t equals whatever. Follow? OK, so uh, how do we figure out how much work was done? Yeah, the only energy change here is GPE, right? We're gaining GPE because we're lifting a box, right? So find your change in GPE and divide it by the time. Does that make sense, you guys? So that's going to be m. Uh, sorry, I guess I should put units on this. So our mass is 20 kilograms. G is 9.8 meters a second squared. H is 3 meters. Time is 4 seconds. So on top up there, you're going to get 588 joules. That's how much energy we gain. What's wrong? I don't know. Your brain the 9.8 times tables. Well, it's just 9.8 times 60. You guys don't know that 9.8 times 6? Sorry. Yeah, I, just, I, have the, I have the multiples of 9.8. 600 minus 12, right? There you go. OK, so everybody good up to there? All right, so divide this. Oh, good. Uh, 
whoever just asked that, could you have negative power? Absolutely. That would just mean instead of gaining energy every second, you're losing energy every second. Yeah. So I guess technically it depends on, wait, say that again. So it depends on what work you're talking about. So, so here, and the problem is not super specific about it. It says how much power was used. What do you think that means? How much power was used by Roy or gravity? When I wrote the problem, I met Roy, and I thought that was implicit in the statement. Okay. So I agree. The work, the power for gravity would be negative, right? Do you see what I'm saying? All right, so maybe I'm being a little bit too uh, hand wavy at this. Uh, let me do this. So if we're trying to find the power used by Roy, that should be the work Roy does divided by the time it takes, right? The work Roy does, he's a non-conservative force, right? So the work that he does should be our change in total energy divided by the time, right? So do you agree that the box is gaining total energy? Yeah. OK. So that's why this was all positive. But gravity is losing energy? Well, so the power, I guess you would say, generated by gravity would be the work that gravity does divided by the time it took. So that should be the opposite of the change in GPE, right? divided by the time. So that would be negative. And so that. So our net power here would be 0, which just indicates that there's no change in kinetic energy. Does that make a little bit of sense? I mean, it's similar to, somebody asked me this. Zach, you were asking me this at the end of the class the other day. You were worried about that problem where, where you're lifting a box and you're worried about the fact that, how is the energy changing? Guys, please. How is the energy changing even if the net force is zero, right? Mm -hmm. So I tell you what, let me, let me wrap up this example real quick so that we're not sort of stopping mid midstream. And it sounds like maybe there's still a little bit of confusion about that. So let me share the example. And I think this will help you too, um, Christine. Um, let me share that with everybody, and I think that'll be helpful. OK, so anyway, so let's get back on track. Is everybody cool with the calculations I did up to here, the 147 joules per second? OK, and so that joules per second has a name, all right? 147 joules per second, we just call that watts. And then we just abbreviate it as a capital letter W. That does not work. It, that does not work, exactly. So now you got to be careful here. Watts and work are both W. So if I write, for example, W equals 147, or I write 147 W, one of those W's is work and one of them's watts. 147 is watts. <laughs> right. So this 147, since the W's after, that's got to be watts. So you recognize, oh, that's watts. That must be the power. And this top thing is sloppy because it says W equals. So the W must mean work, but it doesn't have units. So it's probably joules, right? Follow? So these are different statements. But I just want to make sure you understand there are two different W's here. Work. Lots. Cool. <laughs> exactly. <yes. laughs> All right. So everybody good? All right. So let me. It seems like there's still a little bit of confusion about this. This whole like work done by gravity and why this is negative thing. So was the example I walked through with you the other day helpful? Yeah. Okay. So let me do this real quick, you guys. And if I if I already did this with you guys, then stop me. But so in this problem, we're lifting a 20 kilogram box up three meters, right? So check it out. So 20 kilograms, we're going to lift it up 
three meters, right? So up at the top, you guys got to stop with the things because you're not <laughs> with the, these guys. Uh, all right. Everybody agree with that? OK. Since we're lifting it, the velocity begins and ends at 0, right? All right, so I can certainly calculate the GPE up here. It turns out to be 588 joules. The KE up here is going to be 0. That means my total energy is 588 joules up the top. Is everybody good with that? All right, down here at the bottom, the GPE is 0. The KE is 0, which means my total energy is 0, right? Good? All right, now let's relate this change in energy to the forces that cause that change in energy. All right, so what forces are acting on the box? Roy, Roy and gravity. gravity, right? So my force of gravity is just 20 times 9.8, so that's 196 newtons, right? Why are you there? I didn't invite you. All right, um, <laughs> take that, keyboard. Um, <laughs> Did we do this already? Well, uh, we're, it, it, we're, at this point, we're like 90% done, so let's yeah, finish yeah. it up. So how much force would Roy need to lift it? 196. Is everybody cool with that, with why, it's, why we can use 196? We did do this yesterday, because we talked about the fact that it averaged out, right? That you need a little more to get it moving, a little less to stop it, but it averages out. Good? Everybody cool? All right, so if we now use this, here are the things we can do. We can let's calculate the work done by Roy. Well, that should be the force of Roy times the distance, 588 joules. That's my change in total energy, right? Roy did work, and he changed the total energy. Cool? All right, let's calculate the work done by gravity. So that would be negative 196 times 3, which is negative 588 joules. Oh, well, that should be equal to the opposite of my change in GPE, right? Which maps up, right? We gained 588 joules of GPE. Gravity did negative work. Good? Because gravity is conservative. Because gravity is conservative. Everybody good? All right. And then finally, we could calculate. If there's a quicker way to change colors. And it doesn't give me like an orange option. All right, we're going to reuse green. Oh, we'll use black. We can use black, yeah. All right. Uh, so, network is net force times displacement. What's the net force on the box, you guys? Zero. Zero. So that's equal to my change in kinetic energy, right? My kinetic energy didn't change, right? Good? Right, that's the work energy theorem, right? Net work is equal to change in kinetic energy. All right, so to Christine's point, Let's do this then. So look, net work is equal to uh, the work done by conservative forces plus the work done by non-conservative forces, right? So zero equals negative uh, 588 plus 588, right? Good. Now, if we divide all of these by time, then that gets us to power, right? But all of these changes occurred in the same four seconds, right? So dividing them all by four, you're saying, well, the net power was zero. The conservative force was changing our GPE at a rate of 147 joules per second. And the non-conservative was changing the total energy at 147 joules per second. Cool? Yes, that was what I was looking for. Yeah. And I should have worded it better. You're right. Because you're right. Saying how much power was used is not very specific. I assumed that because the problem was about Roy, that people would just, you know, sort of figure that out. But 
You're right. I should have been more specific. So like breaks would be negative power, right? Yep, because you're losing energy. Exactly. Did everybody hear that? He said breaks would be negative energy, right? Because you're losing kinetic energy. It's taking energy away from the car. In fact, that's what hybrids do, right? They take that energy away and then use it to charge the battery, right? That's how hybrid cars work. They yeah, so the, I don't know exactly the mechanics behind it, but somehow it takes the rotational kinetic energy of the tires and generates power for the battery. All right, so, uh, so this one is basically just making sure you understand what a watt is. 60 watts is the same as what? What's a watt equal to? A joule per second, right? So this is actually a 60 watt light bulb means it uses 60 joules per second, right? So to find the energy used in 12 seconds, you just multiply, right? Mathematically, it's this. You go, all right, here's my power. My time is 12 seconds. If power is work over time, then work is power times time. 60 times 12 gives you whatever, 720. Cool? Everybody good? Yeah. All right, next example. This one's actually, like, new. All right. What's up? All right, so both of the examples we just did dealt with average power, right? Okay, so note that often the power generated by a force is not constant. In other words, the rate at which your energy gets converted is not constant. All right, and in that case, that's when you got to do this stupid dot product thing. Okay, so in this one, it says Roy pushes a 30 kilogram box across a frictionless surface with a horizontal force of 120 newtons for five seconds. And then we got to do this stuff. All right, so. Uh, let's uh, write out what we know. So we've got, oh, um, we need to assume it starts at rest. <coughs> so add that in. That's my bad. I should have put that in the problem. Okay, so um, let's make a little drawing. So here's my, the box. It's got a mass of 30 kilograms. The velocity here is zero. Force of Roy is 120 newtons. At the end of five seconds, the box is going to be over there. Uh, it's frictionless. So I think that's, that's kind of the deal. That's what we know. All right, so is everybody good up to that? Yeah. I just have a quick question. The velocity is velocity average, right? Because if it's delta x over c. No. The, in this one, you mean? Yeah, the equation. No, because, well, so first of all, no, because you're talking about instantaneous power, and that would deal with that uh, instantaneous velocity. Mathematically, it's because to derive that equation, the v came from dx dt. So we are taking the slope of the position time graph at one instant. Follow? Yeah. Cool. Everybody good? Thank you for asking that good question. I think I sort of glossed over this here. All right. Um, okay. So we got to use a little bit of Newton's laws and kinematics here uh, to find our velocity over here, right? Because so to find the power, we need to somehow find the work done between these two points, right? So there's two ways you can do that. You can find this displacement and then do force times displacement. Or you can find the change in kinetic energy, which would require you to know the velocity here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So which way is better? Uh, kind of six to one. You know, I don't know that it really matters there. You want to go kinetic energy? Okay. What were the two options? So we're trying to find the average power. So P average is uh, the work that Roy does divided by the time it takes, right? So to find the work that Roy does, two options. We can figure out the force that Roy exerts and multiply it by the displacement. We know Roy's force, but we don't know the displacement. Follow? Or
Or we can do the work that Roy does is our change in total energy. For this problem, that's just a change in kinetic energy, right? So we either need to find the displacement or this final velocity so we can find that kinetic energy. Does that make sense? Everybody on board with that? Yeah? I'm just wondering how the force is constant. Uh, the force? OK. So, I was, so Josh just said, I'm just wondering how the force isn't constant. And you're right, the force is constant. But the power generated by the force is not. Because the velocity isn't constant. <laughs> and so the rate at which the energy gets converted is changing because the velocity is changing. Yep. Oh. Right? Because you're, you're going to go through displacement at a quicker rate. Okay. Right? As you speed up, this displacement is going to change faster. That's weird. It's I know. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. Sorry? It's instantaneous, though, right? Uh, your instantaneous power is not constant, correct? Okay. All right, so are we all good? So much for having time to work. I apologize. Uh, OK, so everybody on board up to here. All right, so I think we've all agreed that it's going to be easier to go this second route, yes? OK, so um, let's see. So to find that final velocity, well, you guys tell me, how can I find that final velocity? Sure, give me a start, Peter. Uh, you can divide the force by the mass to get the acceleration, and then Everybody agree with that? Find the acceleration. And then you can do this guy, VF equals VI plus AT to get 20 meters a second. Cool? Yep. All right, so I said so. Here we go. All right, so uh, let's go back to our drawing up here. So we know the velocity here is zero, and we just figured out that the velocity here is 20 meters a second, right? Good? So uh, if VI is zero, that means that our kinetic energy initially is zero, which means that our total energy initially is zero, right? Cool. And our final velocity, we just figured out, is 20 meters a second. So we can use that to find our kinetic energy, right? 1 half mv squared. So 15 times 400 is what, 6,000 joules? Yeah. The worst zeros ever. Good. And therefore, how much work did Roy do, you guys? 6,000 joules, right? power that Roy used or generated, however you want to say that, is 6,000 joules over, what was, is the time four or five seconds? Five, five seconds. seconds. Five seconds. So you get 1,200 joules per second or just simply 1,200 watts. Now, technically speaking, that's average, right? Yeah. It's the average. Because during those five seconds, the energy changed by 6,000. Does that mean that the box literally gains 1,200 joules every second? No, it's just the average. Just like going 300 miles in five hours doesn't mean you literally went 60 miles every hour. Same exact idea. Yeah. So, sorry, I keep going back. You're so fine. If this is a spring instead of like Roy, then because the force isn't constant, you can still do this, right? Because it's the force of one instant. Right? Correct. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, ooh. Because it's like x squared. When you say this, if this was a spring, then you could still do this, where you find the change in kinetic energy. But you could not use the force, because the force is changing, so you couldn't do force times the displacement. So, the, so this option would not have worked. Yeah, and using this acceleration wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it would have been. You would have had to have done it using conservation of energy or calculus. OK, everybody good? All right. Um, all right, 
So that's part A. That's the average power. Now, let's find the power Roy is generating after two seconds and after four seconds. Okay. So for part B, to find the power after two seconds, I'm looking for instantaneous power, right? So the power, I'm just going to put a little in parentheses at two seconds, sort of make up my own notation here, is force dot velocity times the cosine of theta. But which direction is push point for me, guys? Which way is Roy pushing forward? Which way is it moving? So what's theta? Zero, right? So this just amounts to force times velocity. Cool? So we need to know the velocity after two seconds. Well, our initial velocity was zero. Our acceleration was four or five. Four. Four times two. So you get eight meters a second, right? All right, so watch what happens. I, the, the main reason I want to go through this is I want to kind of show you that the units are, that they sort of make sense, right? So our power then is our force. So what we're doing is we're saying, all right, we're pushing this thing with 120 newtons worth of force. And it's moving at a rate of 8 meters per second. So if, hypothetically, this maintained, you'd be exerting 128 newtons for a distance of 8 meters every second. Right? So here's your, your work, 120 times 8, divided by the time, right? But it's instantaneous, because you're not going to keep going at this velocity, so, okay? So anyway, if you multiply this out, what's that give you? 9,600 uh, joules per second, or watts? 960. Oh, sorry, x to zero. Thank you. Cool? All right, and then similarly for part C, the velocity after four seconds ends up being 16 meters a second. Just kind of doing the same process. Wow, are you seriously? What is going on, computer? Whoa. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So, so if we find the power here, the main thing I want to show you now is because we're moving faster, You've still got the same force, to Josh's point, the force is constant, but now we're converting energy at a higher rate simply because you're going through more displacement in the same time. Right? We're going, we're moving twice as fast, so you're, in this case, gaining kinetic energy twice as quickly. Does that make sense? Um, and then finally, D, why is the power increasing? So why is the power increasing? Because the velocity is increasing. Um, e, how would the problem change if the force was exerted at 60 degrees below the horizontal? How would that change all of these previous answers? Cosine. It'd be times the cosine of 30, right? It, everything would be a little bit less, right? Because not all of his force would be going into converting energy, right? Some of his force would be canceled out by the normal force, right? Because he'd be pushing down on it. Cool? So all of these answers would just be times cosine of 30. And you'd be done. Oh, oh, or, uh, the, uh, yeah, sorry, 60. Thank you. Which is a half. That's why I chose that, yeah. All right, everybody good? All right. Um, and then finally, I tacked on one last example here at the end just to sort of show you the... The, the calculus tie-in. So if you want to take a second and scribble down that problem. You got room somewhere? Isn't this like what? Question 25. There's like a multiple choice one that you took out. 
It may have been, yeah. Okay. All right, so what we've got here, you guys, is this. We've got an expression for our kinetic energy as a function of time, right? Okay, so it's 4t squared minus 3t plus 8. So the idea is, if you give me a time, I'll tell you how much kinetic energy there is, right? Okay, so if I wanted to find the average power between two points, I'd find the kinetic energy at the first point, kinetic energy at the second point, find the difference, and then divide by the time, right? Okay, but here we want the average, or the instantaneous power, because it says at t equals two seconds, right? So power is the rate at which work is being done, right? Okay, so let's see. It looks like the only, ch it's moving on a horizontal axis, so there's no p potential energy that we need to worry about, right? I guess there could be a spring, but let's assume not. Um, so the only change in energy here is kinetic energy, right? So this is, this is going to be a little redundant, but, right? So you don't really need the delta there, right? Right, because this is change in changing, yep. right? So I just want, long story short, I want to take the derivative of this mess. Right? Because I want to know the rate at which my energy is changing. Because that's what power is, right? So what are we going to get? 8t minus 3? Cool. So after two seconds, you're going to get 8 times 2 minus 3, which is what? 13 watts. You know who I didn't say hi to? Anthony. Hi, Frazier. Yeah, Gosprey. Why do I got to be here? Uh, All right. Does this make sense, you guys? Yes. All right. Cool. Um, problem. Yes.